Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, with the bloodbath of a legislative session that we're having out here in Washington State, it's really nice to finally be able to talk about something other than the complete lunacy occurring at our state capitol. Unfortunately, though, that alternative subject today is the Biden administration and the ATF. But, you know, we always, always talk here at Washington Gun Law about how the ATF just runs around like a rabbit attack dog that has been let off a leash. And that's not necessarily hyperbole because today we have a classic example of our commander in chief essentially turning the ta attack dog loose. So today, let's spend a few minutes and talk about when your president lets the ATF attack dogs off the leash again. Okay, so the issue we are talking about today is President Biden's executive order on gun violence dated Tuesday, March 14, 2023. Now, executive orders sometimes have a lot of substance to them and sometimes they do not, but what they always have is a lot of puff piece in it, okay? There's a lot of chest puffing going on. There's a lot of braggadocious behavior. And this is not unique to this particular White House. This is the way every single White House works. Now, the president, of course, was quick to point out, it is the policy of my administration that executive departments and agencies will pursue every legally available and appropriate action to reduce gun violence. Through this whole of government approach, my administration has made historic progress to save lives. My administration has taken action to keep guns out of dangerous hands, especially dangerous weapons off our streets, hold gun traffickers and road gun dealers accountable, fund accountable, effective community policing, and invest in community violence interventions and prevention strategies. And yes, Mr. President, we can see the fruits of those labors because we are all, all today living in a much safer community. The president go, went on to say, Last year, I signed into law the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the most significant bipartisan gun safety legislation in nearly 30 years. The act provides communities with new tools to combat gun violence, including enhanced background checks for individuals under age 21, funding for extreme risk protection orders and other crisis interventions, and increased mental health resources to help children impacted by gun violence heal from the resulting grief and trauma. Then the president gets into the call for action. In this case, I'm calling on Congress to pass unconstitutional laws. Believe that's just conjecture? No, this is actually what the president said. I continue to call on the Congress to take additional actions to reduce gun violence, including banning assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, requiring background checks for all gun sales, requiring safe storage of firearms, funding my comprehensive Safer America plan, and expanding community violence intervention and prevention strategies. In the meantime, my administration will continue to do all that we can within existing authority to make our community safer. And what he really means by that last sentence is, is with my executive power, I shall now go get my attack dogs, which of course is the ATF, and I will let them off the leash to go sick themselves upon lawful and responsible gun owners. Why do I say that? Well, when we get to the meat and potatoes of the president's order, the executive action that he declares is as follows. The attorney general shall develop and implement a plan to, one, clarify the definition of who is engaged in the business of dealing in firearms and thus required to become a federal firearms licensee, FFL, in order to increase compliance with the federal background check requirements for firearm sales, including by considering a rulemaking as appropriate and consistent with applicable law. Yes, you heard that right. Considering more rulemaking, because we know that when the ATF starts making rules, nothing bad happens. And this is going to have to do with who is actually an FFL. And I'm telling you what they're going to do is they're going to create a rule that's going to force any FFL that does not step into compliance with everything that the Biden administration wants to no longer be allowed to possess that FFL license. This is how they're going to try to crush the FFL industry. There is more to the executive order, including prevent 
former FFLs whose licenses have been revoked or surrendered from continuing to engage in the business of dealing in firearms. And you see, Mr. President, that probably actually it is existing law already. Not sure why that's necessary. There are other parts to this executive order, including publicly released to the fullest extent permissible by law inspection reports of FFL dealers cited for violations of the law. That's right. We need to publicly shame and dox these FFLs. And again, you can see what's happening on the federal level for my Washington viewers here. This is exactly what's happening on the state level here, too, which is an all out attack from all fronts on the FFL industry to drive them out of business. The president's executive order also wants to crack down on the following. Support efforts to modernize and make permanent the Undetectable Firearms Act found in 18 U.S.C. 922 Section P. But listen, there's a lot, lot more in this order, and it's turning loose a lot of the alphabet agencies, not just the ATF. This is an all-out release of all the alphabet agencies on different ways that we can disarm the American citizens. Don't believe me? Take a look at the executive order yourself, but it includes some of the following. That the Secretary of Defense Attorney General and Secretary of Homeland Security develop and further campaigns for other efforts to promote safe storage of firearms. That the Secretary of Defense Attorney General and Secretary of Homeland Security, as well as the Secretary of Health and Human Services, shall develop and undertake efforts to encourage effective use of extreme risk protection orders or red flag laws and partner further with law enforcement. That the Secretary of Defense, in consultation with the Attorney General and Secretary of Homeland Security, shall develop and implement principles to further firearm and public safety practices through the Department of Defense's acquisition of firearms consistent with applicable law. And I want you to pay attention to this video right here, which we did about some of the woke policies that are being implemented in the military, supposedly under the guise of trying to prevent suicide, but it's really just meant to literally disarm soldiers and sailors and so forth. There's more to this executive order, including that the heads of federal law enforcement agencies shall as soon as practical, but no later than 180 days from the date of this order, ensure that all respective law enforcement agencies are integrated into the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network. Network. Okay, and then here's the humorous one. I'm going to read it verbatim because you guys are all going to laugh because it also includes the Secretary of Transportation in consultation with the Department of Justice shall work to reduce the loss or theft of firearms during shipment between FFLs and to improve reporting of such losses or thefts, including by engaging with carriers and shippers. That's right. We're going to put Pete Buttigieg on that. And we all know that Pete Buttigieg is actually perhaps one of the most famous uh, Secretary of Transportations in the history of that position for the mere fact that we all know that he's in that position. And the only way as the Secretary of Transportation that everybody in the world will know that's your job is when you are as terrible at it as Pete Buttigieg has been. Oh, and then finally, the FTC is going to be tasked with coming up and trying to figure out how these gun manufacturers are marketing to children and also using military images to market to adults. But the big concern here, and the point we're trying to make is this, is that when you take a look at this order and when you take a look at the unfettered discretion that we have given these executive agencies and the lack of checks and balances, what you have here is literally a president who is letting every single one of the alphabet agency attack dogs off the leash to come after you, the lawful and responsible gun owner. Listen, you may have more questions about what's contained in this executive order or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. If you do, you should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, hey, all that information is in the description box below. In the meantime, I want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about here all the time at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.